I've learned is that if you're faced by unreasonable opposition, it's best to let your it's best to let the unreasonable <laughs> opposition speak because they manifest themselves as unreasonable. Yeah, and then yeah, everyone can yeah. see it. Yeah. And so that's part of the reason that you want free speech, right? Is you want people Oh shit. Uh oh. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we're better. Well at least they're at the back of the crowd this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, come on, let's uh Let's sort of no insulate Dr. Through. Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Security, man. Security. Security. So, Security's not helping. Thanks. No, and security can't help, you know, yeah, because no matter not, what... Not, this is not their job. Well, and no matter what they do, they're wrong. Right. If they let things go on, then they're wrong. And if they intervene and, they're, and they cause trouble for any students, no matter who the students are or what they're doing, they're wrong men, too. So... No, guys, guys, don't shut the fuck up. Guys, don't get in touch. Okay, listen. He's, 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 he's just about horse. That's true. He's going to take care of himself. <laughs> All right, so I can tell you a little bit about why I was opposed to Bill C-16. And there's a variety of reasons. I think the most important one is that it's the first piece of Canadian legislation that's ever been put forward that actually requires people to use a particular set of words. Now, there is other legislation that does govern to some degree what you can't say. So, for example, you can't incite a crime, and that's perfectly logical. It's a reasonable restriction on free speech. But we've never had a piece of legislation ever that would re require you to use a certain kind of vocabulary. And regardless of what that vocabulary is, and the fact that it happens to be about transgendered terminology, hypothetically, is almost beside the point, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it, it, this all focused on this all focused on this particular issue, and it had to focus on some issue. But this isn't the issue that that's, that's at the bottom of it. It's just that complex things manifest themselves in very particular locations, and this just happens to be the location that this is manifesting itself in. Now, the other thing that I really didn't like and still don't like about Bill C-16 is the surrounding policies that, that are basically part of what it's embedded in that were produced by the Ontario Human Rights Commission, which I think is an appallingly dangerous organization, not least because they're terribly muddy thinkers. Amen. And so, what, one, of the things that, one of the things that's happened that I think is reprehensible from a psychological perspective is that in Ontario and, and soon likely in Canada, we're going to write into law an idea of identity that's just radically insufficient. So let, let me give you some examples. So the way that Bill C-16 is currently formulated, if you take into account the surrounding policy documents, there's a, there's a proposition embedded in the law, and that is that biological sex, gender identity, gender expression and sexual uh, preference vary independently and the fact of the matter is that's not true and you can demonstrate it very straightforwardly the first thing you observe is that virtually everyone whose biological sex is either male or female has a gender identity of male or female in fact the 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 <laughs> people people who don't fit into that category they exist, there's no doubt about that, but they're a very small minority. Yep. And the reason I'm pointing out that they're a small minority is because it makes the claim that those things vary independently false. Right. And then you note, too, that most of the people who have a binary biological sex and a binary bio, uh, gender identity also present themselves in a manner that's the same as their gender identity and their biological sex. And so that's another indication of the non-independence of the three layers of purported identity. And finally, you can see too that the vast majority of people, for example, men who are biologically male, who present themselves as male, or who identify as male, who present themselves as male, are also heterosexual. 95% of them, perhaps 98% of them, depends on the statistics. I just had a question. I believe it was ex explicitly stated to you that you said you're staying off of those topics. We kind of want to hear your views on free speech, but we don't want to hear your views on gender identity and stuff. I thought it was well, made clear. Those are... <laughs> we're no longer in that event now. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, I'd appreciate it if you just stayed on topic. I think he is on topic. Yeah, I think he is. I think you made so, a point. anyways, um, the reason that I think that this is a problem is because it's written into the law. 
And the law isn't the place where you debate those sorts of things. You don't instantiate a particular philosophy into the law, especially one that's predicated on what I would say, it's, 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 it's absolutely incoherent. And not only that, like, even if you're thinking about it from the perspective of someone, say, who's, who's homosexual, one of the arguments that people who are gay very frequently use is that there's actually a biological underpinning to their homosexuality. Right. But are we going to dispense with that? Well, what happens if we dispense with that? Right. What, what happens if we dispense with the idea that there's a biological underpinning to homosexuality? Outrage. Does that mean that it can just be changed? And what are people going to do with that piece of information except try to change it? Cripe, the people who are, who've been fighting for homosexual rights for the last 30 years very frequently made the case that the reason that the rights were necessary was because there was a reality to the condition. Well, I'm not arguing for that or against it. What I'm saying is that the law, the way it's currently constituted, makes arguments like that completely invalid. It right. does the same thing with transsexuality, which we don't know enough about to we don't know enough about it to determine, say, its its manner of causal origin. Now, it looks to me like, like, I think it's premature to exclude a biological component, especially because of what we know about how gender identity and biological sex are instantiated in utero. So we know, for example, that the, the, the standard human fetus has a female morphology. It doesn't matter whether it's XX or XY from the chromosomal and then it's transformed into a male morphology with testosterone. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I'm telling you this is because. Save your breath. We got all night. <laughs> the reason that I'm telling you this is because. There's no reason, there's no reason whatsoever to presume that the laws that are being put in place to protect the people that these laws are supposed to protect will do anything that remotely resembles protecting them. Yep. And as I mentioned when we were in the hall, when I talk to you about the letters that I've received from transsexual people, they're very terrified about all of this. Yep. Because the vast majority of them want to be as invisible as everyone else wants to be. Right. And all this does is draw negative attention to them. They're also not very happy about the fact that they're being represented noisily by people who have absolutely no right to speak for them. So. One of the things we really have to get over, and in a serious way, is the idea that just because you're talking to someone black or white or transsexual or homosexual, that you're speaking to a member of a homogenous tribe, and that the opinion that they happen to have is the opinion that all those who are like them share. There's nothing that's more racist than that assumption, right? Yep. Because it means that Woo! they know a damn thing about you except the most boring part of your identity. And I can predict everything that you are and everything that you think. Well, that's a terrible thing to believe. And it's also patently untrue. You know, there's no reason to assume that any group of people who don't fit into traditional society for some way are any more homogenous in their general makeup and their political views than any other group. In fact, all the evidence suggests precisely the contrary. And it's another thing I really don't like about identity politics, because it's really predicated on the idea that the only thing that's important about you is what's most obvious when you look at you. And that's an appalling proposition. Well, I can tell you, why? I can tell you a little bit about why these attempts to shut people down are being made, because you need to know this. So, as far as I've been able to determine, this kind of protest is an expression of a philosophy that's grounded partly in postmodernism and partly in Marxism. Now, 
The postmodern element is basically this. There's no such thing as genuine individual identity. What there is is group identity. And you, like it or not, only have the interests of your group. And the whole world is nothing but a battleground between groups of different interests. There's no dialogue. There's no possibility of talking between the groups. It's just a power stage where combat has to take place. And so the reason that speakers with whom the radical postmodernists and the Marxists don't agree are denied a platform is because those people do not believe from a philosophical position that dialogue can bring consensus. And all that's left, if you forego that particular principle, is this. And this is only where it starts. You know, the fact is, is that you're all pretty damn civilized. And thank God for that. Because if there were enough fools in the crowd, especially those who are intent on violence, this would turn out very differently. Right. And we do not want to go down that pathway. It's a big mistake. We've been down that pathway many, many times.